Esrum are, in old language, a couple thousand years ago, disciples. Those who are trying to prepare themselves for entry into the evolutionary level above human, synonymous with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk to you about the most urgent thing that is on our mind and what we suspect is the most urgent thing on the minds of those who will connect with us. We'll title this tape, uh, Planet Earth About to be Recycled. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. Before I begin the video, I just want to take a quick moment to say that I've always tried to be incredibly careful when I make these videos. These topics can be difficult to discuss, and it's really easy to upset people without even meaning to do so. I can't tell you how many videos I've put on private or just never published because I questioned some aspect of that video. Which is why I've opened this channel to memberships where members would have access to all of those videos, numerous exclusive videos made just for channel members, along with early access and sneak peeks to my upcoming videos. However, if membership aren't for you, you can always support this channel by leaving a tip in the tip jar by clicking on the thanks option, or just hitting the like button because it really does go a long way to help. I appreciate each and every one of you, so with that being said, grab a cup of coffee and let's get into the video, shall we? In 1997, 39 people, 21 women and 18 men, took phenobarbital mixed with applesauce or pudding along with some vodka, then they put plastic bags over their heads and waited to suffocate to death. Once they were dead, the living would pose their bodies covered in purple sheets and then they would continue the process until all 39 people had died. They did this because this man, Marshall Applewhite, who called himself Doe, convinced the group that he was an alien in the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that an alien spaceship was coming to Earth hidden behind the hill Bob Comet. He told the group that once they committed suicide, they would join him with their new alien bodies on the spaceship, and they would live forever. Every single member of the group went through with the suicides. Three other members of the cult who weren't present at the house during the suicides even killed themselves on later dates. And as completely detached from reality and insane as all of that sounds, possibly the craziest part of all of this is that these were highly educated, intelligent people. The mansion the group lived in cost $7,000 a month, and that was back in 1997. These people had high-level, well-paying jobs, they didn't do drugs, they were articulate, intelligent people, and they all lined up to commit mass suicide. This video is going to discuss some of the teachings and philosophy of Marshall Applewhite and analyze what could have possibly led so many people to join a suicide cult. And I think the best possible way to explain what this cult's beliefs were and why they did what they did is best described by the cult members themselves. And to do that, we're going to go over the Heaven's Gate final farewell video message that they recorded days before they all took their own lives. Okay, we're going to begin our interviews today with Cerrone. How long have you been in this classroom circumstance? Um, I've been in here since Valentine's Day, 21 years ago. Okay, and is there anything in particular you would like to say? Um, what would I like to say? Oh goodness, um, there's so much I want to say to you. Just about anything that would be of any significance to you. Um, is already on Heaven's Gate. I mean, this is kind of, in one sense, kind of silly. Um, I, I would really strongly recommend if you could find Heaven's Gate, the book, the website, you know, go there, study it, read it. Um, it would do you a lot of good. Um, but uh, maybe on a more personal note, there's, there's, there's a number of you out there that have, have probably been in contact with me personally, a number of the classmates that you'll be seeing on this, on this tape. 
And uh, remember how you felt when we were there? Remember, you know, what it was like to work with us and to be with us? And you probably do better off trusting that rather than whatever information you run across on the TV. I'm sure there's going to be some stuff come out about this that um, can't give the perspective that you would have. So trust your own feeling rather than what you hear from someone else. I mean, that would be my primary advice to give. The quest, Odie. I guess you're next. I'm not sure I'm going to follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any, you know, anything particularly you'd like to say? Well, uh, a few days ago, I, um, um, I've been in the class for three years, just about three, four days ago, and uh, I don't know, I just feel like I've learned so much about the, uh, the next level and uh, kingdom of God, um, kingdom of heaven, and on how best to cut all ties, attachments, and addictions to self and this world. And uh, this is my prepared statement. It's very simple. And uh, I don't know, I think my constant asking long before I entered the class is, was the key, the, the constant um, begging uh, for the real facts, the, the real truth as how to get out of this world and grow beyond it, and rise above it, and leave it behind, um, both self and this world. So creating this video took a much longer time than I thought it would. I'd already recorded my script before I went into the editing process on my video, but after I started editing what these people said during their, I mean, this is basically suicide tapes, but after I started editing, one of the things that really jumped out at me was that these were all incredibly likable people. They seemed like really kind and gentle people. And while I think everything they said basically in this video was crazy, it, it's sad. I, it's deeply sad to me that all of these people died and I think after I actually listened to them it really humanized them as opposed to them just being another story that I discuss on this channel. Hi I'm sorry. We uh, <laughs> just you know are interviewing a number of people just to see a number of people express some interest in saying something on camera to the people that might you know get this tape and uh, we just wondered if you know if you had anything particularly you wanted to say to people. Well I just want to let everyone know how lucky and happy I feel to be here and let you know that what we're about to do is certainly nothing to think negatively about. We're all choosing of our own free will to go to the next level with T and Do. That's right. And they are certainly not what the media is going to paint them out to be. I never got to meet T in this incarnation in her human vehicle, but I can tell you that Do is the most special, dignified, unhuman, objective person that you can ever meet. Mr. He has helped us so much and put up with so much and never done anything that <laughs> seemed even close to the way a human would respond. And I guess that's really all I want to say. <laughs> okay. That's, that sounded pretty good to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Wake and Odie, is there anything you'd like yeah, to add? Yes. I think I feel just like Iris Odie does. And if people would just know that we're not forced into this in any way, it's, you know, our own choosing to do it. And I'm really happy that I made this choice because there was a lot of things kind of working against me not to, I'm sure. <clears throat> I mean, I know there was the people in the world who thought that I had completely lost my marbles. <laughs> They're not right. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall Applewhite, who again called himself Doe, founded Heaven's Gate with Bonnie Nettles, who went by the name T. During their early teachings, Doe and T instructed their followers that a spaceship was coming to Earth to physically transport them to the next level, which was basically heaven according to the duo. They preached that the group members had to separate themselves from all things human. No drugs, alcohol, sex, anything that they viewed was worldly or human was a big no-no. They all cut their hair in the exact same way, they all dressed in the exact same clothes, ate the exact same food, you get the point. Um, we're very happy and proud to have been members of Tito's class and couldn't be happier about what we're about to do. <laughs> <laughs>
behavior and discipline and ways of thinking that we had held <clears throat> all of our human vehicles became so dis became distasteful and something that was beneath us. So, and I'm embarrassed that I can't express uh, without getting emotional uh, how good I feel about what I'm doing and how good I feel about being here and being uh, given this opportunity to go to the next level. Just the opportunity is the gift is just it's overwhelming is the only word that I can come up with now. Um, it's up to each individual to prove to the next level that, that the next level is all that they want and that there's nothing in the human kingdom to hold them here. It's up to us to show the next level, not for the next level to show us. And just like the person who's in his doctoral degree studying quantum mechanics or something, he can't explain to the second grader what he's learned and what he's doing. But the second grader can say, well, I'm learning addition and subtraction this week. And the older student can say, oh, you know, I kind of remember back when I was doing that. But the younger, the second grader, there's no way you can tune into what college level students. So, you know, we, there is no way for us to explain to the people who are probably watching this tape what's going on. They're not going to understand, but you know, we understand that. When the cult first formed, they actually recruited people by handing out pamphlets and giving seminars, and it actually worked. He recruited 40 people that went along with him to their deaths with pamphlets. Imagine just for a moment how many more people he could have reached if Doe would have had access to social media in his present form. It's kind of a scary thought. I couldn't have had a better life than I've had these 21 years. And if it was good here, I know it's been twice as good when I get up there. And we're looking forward to it. And it's been fun all the way. It'll be more fun going. Well, I, for one, am, am very much aware of the limitations now of this this human vehicle that I have, and I am anxious to be of more service to the next level without it. And so, um, I'm you'll just, you'll be happy just to get the suit of clothes off and put on a brand new, fresh set with you know new vibrations and, and be in a new atmosphere and just so nice and clean this place has just become so corrupt ungodly and polluted and just totally uh, something that is so far beneath the next level that it's for T and Doe to endure what they've endured 22 years it's just unimaginable they go through that for us and I had to come with them because I knew that this is what I had to do. They're all there is, and it's, there's, this place is just like a hologram. It's a training ground for individuals that come from the next level to inherit another vehicle, a, a more refined vehicle, and that's what my task is, to work on my control and my restraint. I had no doubt and it's I'm very happy and this is a very joyous time for the class to be able to be returning home. So Doe and T preached for years that they were basically alien gods and a spaceship was coming to get them and their followers before Earth was recycled. The only problem was that T ended up dying from cancer, which as I'm sure you can imagine, was a bit of a problem for Doe to explain given that she had apparently been a god. But Doe eventually did come up with an explanation for T's death, and that explanation would go on to be the very reason the cult all eventually committed suicide. Because Doe would tell his followers that T hadn't actually died, she just shed her human body and had been instantly transplanted into her alien body. I'm sure you can see where this is about to go. Because after T's death, Doe began teaching his followers that the only way to get their perfect alien bodies and go to the next level was for their human bodies to die. It is my choice to lay down my borrowed physical body, to prove to the next level my love and the trust I have in my older members for what they have shown me as their example of what I can become. Now, one of those questions 
I thought people might want to ask is, how can you, when you, uh, so many of you have so many capabilities and talents, uh, throw, when you could have done so much in the world, choose to throw all that away, and go off with some cult and, and just lose your life. Okay, so in response to that, for one thing, you have to consider what we as individuals wanted to become. Uh, I think everyone in this class wanted something more than the human world had to offer. The attachments that each of these vehicles had were very real. For each of us, there were things that we cared about. There were individuals that, we res that the vehicle respected and loved and cared for very much. And in making the decision that we made to do this, we know that we broke hearts. We know that we hurt people. And we don't take that lightly. It, we didn't want to hurt anyone. Unfortunately, it's the individuals that these vehicles cared for the most that are actually the greatest threat to us. I want to say that Nerodi is of sound mind, and although what's inhabiting this vehicle is not, I am inhabiting the, the vehicle, and I'm really glad that I'm going to be losing this vehicle, shedding it of my own volition, because I'm really tired of this world and what it has become. Um, I feel no bitterness. I feel extreme gratitude and um, thankfulness to my older members, T and Doe. For some, I may have caused some suffering, or this, this choice that I made may have caused some suffering, because the only suffering really is caused by um, individuals accepting the misunderstanding and the misinformation that's out there about an individual choosing to become a member of the Kingdom of Heaven. I just wish that people out there could understand how much we feel and know this is real. This is not a fantasy. We may be giving up these vehicles, um, but we knew we were going to give up these vehicles anyway because we didn't really want them. We have, we know what the vehicles are in the next level are not like these. They're not reproducing, they're not a million, however your, your brain can understand that. And we're going to a world that um, does not live the same way they do in the human kingdom. And I want to thank T and Don the next level for allowing me to be here and to shortly enter the, the literal kingdom of heaven. And it's just so exciting because it, it is a real place and I wish more humans knew that instead of the illusion that they, you know, currently are believing in. Um, and to thank my older member, Doe, and his older member, T, for coming here and offering us the chance to overcome this world and give us the opportunity to, um, to enter the, the true kingdom of God, the evolutionary level above human, and to become a next level member and I, and I just I can't believe um, I mean I just couldn't even begin to comprehend how difficult that task must have been and has been and I just want to make it known to everybody how grateful and thankful I am and I don't think words can express it. The little people I had been looking for had come to take me home. You can think this is all fantasy and that's your choice. There are a lot of illusions in this world and it's hard to sift out the truth. But this is no illusion and some of you will know it after we go. Doe would often compare death to driving a car. You drive your car much like driving your body, and when the time comes, you just get rid of your old car and upgrade to a newer one. Which, at least to me, is a weird comparison, given that trading in your car for a new one doesn't usually require drugging yourself than smothering yourself with a plastic bag. But anyway, moving on. You know, these, these flesh vehicles, I mean, if you use the analogy of a car, um, and, you know, People may keep their cars for a long time before they finally wear out and they clunk out and they die on them and, you know, they go and get another car. Or some people, they say, well, you know, here's a newer model. It's much nicer. And, and um, this one, you know, doesn't quite perform the way I could. And I'd like to move into this new car. So get rid of the old one and get a new one. I mean, that's about all we're talking about. It's not a big deal. Um, I, I'm talking too long. So I, I'll, I'll pass up. The, just... Uh,
this isn't a troubling circumstance. Don't take it as that. It's just a gateway, just a doorway. Okay, thank you. And uh, there's not much I really have to say, except I just wanted the people who are watching this to know that this is something that I uh, have been thinking about, and uh, this is something I'm doing on my own free will, and nobody is really, you know, forcing me to do this. It's something that I know deep inside is right for me, and I feel like that's important. Uh, the next level gives everybody uh, their rights. They're very rights conscious. And they give them the freedom to do whatever they want. And I feel this is part of the freedom that they have given us and the choice they have given us. And I am very excited about going. I can hardly wait. And I'm ready to go. <laughs> very happy to, to be here. Do you have any thoughts about this? Uh, what's next for uh, the only thoughts that I have is the preparation that I've made to separate from the vehicle. Leave it all behind. There's nothing here for me. I want to um, look forward, keep my eye on T and O. That's my path. Nearly every single one of the Heaven's Gate cult members had been living together for over 20 years. They were basically completely isolated from any other friends, they weren't allowed to talk to their family, they were told that their family might try to stop them on their mission. Basically, Doe had total control over every single facet of their lives. And I can see how, when everyone you know and care about is going to take their own life, I can see how a lot of people went along with it. Mostly because once their friends had killed themselves, they would have had nothing left. I've made the conscious choice to willfully exit this vehicle or body that I'm wearing. I'm fully aware that to stay here, to reject the choice, to go to the next level, to separate from the kingdom of God is suicide. Words can't really express what I'm feeling, but I just feel so fortunate and so happy and so humble to be a part of that. And I so look forward to the time when we could be back together with T um, very shortly. I've been on this planet for 31 years and there's nothing here for me. And they were saying to the person I was with that they felt the last final ingredient would be for the vehicles to be dead, be, you know, what humans call dead. And so I said to myself, great, you know, if that's what it takes, that's better than being around here with absolutely nothing to do. The only thing I can say is to us, this step of laying down our, uh, these human bodies that we borrowed for this task, it's just as simple, like we watch a lot of Star Trek, a lot of Star Wars, uh, it's just to us, it's just like going on a holodeck. We've been on a holodeck, we've been in the training, astronaut training program for, we figured out a day equals a thousand years, played it out mathematically, it's roughly 30 minutes. We've been training on a holodeck for 30 minutes. Now it's time to stop, the game's over, it's time to put into practice what we've learned. So, we take off the virtual reality helmet, we take off the vehicle that we've used for this task. We just set it aside, go back out of the holodeck to reality, to be with, you know, the other members on the, on the craft, in the heavens. It's, you know, uh, call it another dimension, call it another reality, who knows? We don't know what it is. We were kept blind and ignorant here, which is kind of the state that, where these vehicles are probably the best we can do. But, it's that simple. I mean, there's, you know, it, we're all looking forward to it. If you could just see it that way and just see how simple this is to us, because we don't identify as these bodies. We know they're not us. I don't know if that helps you any, but if you could just get into our headspace a little bit and just see how happy we are and, uh, you know, how strong will we are about doing this and committed to this. I mean, I'm nothing without my older members, T and Doe, and I, I just can't wait to get up there with them. Once Doe heard that the comet hale bopp was approaching Earth, he immediately became convinced that their spaceship was hiding behind it. For months, his members began to prepare for the final days when they would ascend to the ship, which would be sometime around late March of 97. And in a bizarre coincidence, just days before the group planned to take their own lives, on March 13th, possibly one of the most infamous UFO sightings of all time took place. Because, yeah, that was a day thousands of people all over Phoenix claimed they saw a spaceship in an incident famously known Known as the Phoenix Lights. Now, obviously, I don't think whatever happened in Phoenix was even remotely connected to the cult, but I do think it may have played a role in convincing the group that a spaceship had actually come for them. These here are the most incredible individuals that I have had the honor to spend time with. And to see 
the ways that they have changed and what they've become with the help of Tundo is a statement in itself. And I wish that I could share with you that perspective if I've seen all these grow through those years. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, you know, what I wanted to maybe address more was how I feel about this step that I'm taking. And some may say, well, boy, it's, it's quite a irreversible step. And I just wanted to say that I'm familiar with irreversible steps. And tell you what, I don't know if you remember Doe talking about that some students had chosen, had proven to him that they desired to have their vehicles neutered. And I'm one of those students that did that. And I can't tell you how free that has made me feel. I've been here long enough from the time I had that operation to know the freedom that it offers me. Forget the negative. Think of the positive because like all, everyone has expressed, the media, the, the lower forces will take this and try to do something else with it. But know that we are happy in what we have done, what we have grown to. We are going home so that we can be of service to future civilizations for all of you. And this is what we strive for. And I know that we are at the end and I look very, very forward to this next major step of ours where we're going to be shedding these creatures, these primitive creatures that we have used for our lesson ground, and that we're going to be moving on to the next evolutionary level above human, and taking on our brand new vehicles that we're going to be uh, using in the next level. I'd also like to say that this is what we're about to do of my own volition and I know that is what I want to do and that no matter what happens that decision is entirely up to me and that's the way the next level is. It's my choice to do what I feel right and led to do and, and I'm planning on following my older member no matter where he goes or, or what it is that is what I want to do and that's what I have to do. And I'm very thankful for the design of that. And that's all. I also want but the bottom line is, is that I am doing this of my own free will. I have chosen to do it. It's not somebody, something that somebody brainwashed me into or convinced me of or, or did a con job of. Something I have grown to know and to understand. And of my own will, I have chosen to do. And if anybody feels bad about that, that's their problem. It's my choice. Because of the kind of society that we have in this world, and especially in this Western country, um, you have a problem with they don't let you do what you want to do with your, with your life. So we're choosing to do this. You'll, you'll see this tape after I have put this physical body down. And that's the way it is. So we have no choice about it. Um, if, if, for the record, if people want to know why, we're choosing to do this. I think this planet has become a very, very hideous place. Um, they take control of you from the cradle to the grave. You have no choices except when the next level offers you some choices. And most of the time, you're herded around like animals. You have no choices. What they put in front of you are your choices. I don't like what they put in front of me. I'm making the final choice here. The choice is out of their hands, what I'm going to do from here on. That's the way I'd like to leave it. Goodbye. So, T and O, we owe everything to them. We're right. going to lay these vehicles down here shortly, and we're going to. What we're doing is we're going home. We're going home to those individuals who sent us here to do this task, and this is the happiest and joyous thing that you can possibly imagine. We're going home. We've got a place to go to. Now you're going to find this old crummy vehicle in a bunk someplace that I'll be going. I'll probably be watching when you when you check it out and and observe your responses and your reaction when you look at these vehicles and they're all nothing but containers that we've used and bored for the short amount of time so we have nothing but gratitude and joy and thankfulness to our older members for giving us this opportunity and we're going to be able to help this human civilization for a much greater and taller perspective than you can possibly imagine so with that, we're going to say goodbye, and we'll maybe be talking to you again. You never know.
After the suicides, the group left behind a small handful of members to run their website and to try to help people ascend before the earth was recycled. It's been working on 30 years since Doe made his prediction and we've yet to be recycled, but who knows, maybe recycling just takes a while. And believe it or not, the cult members who've remained have in fact maintained the Heaven's Gate website, and it still very much exists to this day. I've left a link in the description of this video to their website. Keep in mind the site was made in the late 90s and it really shows, and honestly, it only seems to add to the overall creepiness behind what it represents. And that uh, we might see you all again, and then we might not, but we hope that you remember us as we were, and not how other people are going to try and tell you that we are. And one last thing we'd like to say is, 39 to beam up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But that's it for this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching.